Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be performing the direct shear test. And now in front of me is the apparatus that will be involved in this test. This is the shear box, the lower section, the upper section. These are both uh, 60 millimeter by 60 millimeter. Here is the base plate. These are the two porous plates. These are the gripper or shear plates. And this is the loading cap. Now this will all be placed in such an assembly where the upper section will be placed on top of the lower section and then these clamping screws will be used to fix the upper section to the lower section because as you can see in another one over here the lower section has these two screws that these uh, clamping screws pass through and grip. As you can see now it is completely fixed. This is to ensure that at the start of the experiment when you are placing your soil inside it, it will be f the upper section is flush with the lower section and that the sample placed is 60 by 60 millimeter. So at the bottom we will place the base plate then the porous plate after that and then the shear plate now as you can see these grooves on the shear plate the application of force will be provided from this direction against the upper section so the grooves must be perpendicular to the application of force then we will place our sample. The sample depth will be 2 centimeters or 20 millimeters. And then in the same direction perpendicular to the application of force, but upside down, we will place the upper shearing plate. Above that we will place another porous stone and then the loading cap. Okay. Now over here we have the direct shear machine. This is where we will place our shear box. These treads are, uh, allow the shear box to roll with the application of force on it. Now currently I'm doing this manually but the motor will run and it will push this uh, jack forward horizontally. This in turn will push the box which will press against this piston. This piston is connected to this proving ring and once it the force is applied on it the proving ring begins to squeeze and as it does so this dial gauge in the center is uh, calibrated to uh, show how much load is being acted upon it. Now the proving ring constant is 0 0.82 pounds per division this means that for every one division the uh, load uh, gauge shows that is how much force is being uh, applied on it like right now it's 10 that means 8.2 pounds have been applied on it this is the deflection dial gauge it is 0 0.01 to 0 uh, to 20 millimeter uh, 0 to 20 millimeter that's how much this can record and the least count is 0 0.01 millimeter which means that for every division moved 0 0.01 millimeter have, has moved so if the dial gauge reading is 100 that means that one millimeter has moved okay now we'll begin with our assembly now as you can see uh, the shear box over here, one side is plain and the other side has this indentation uh, that is uh, extruding out from one side. So what we will do is we will place the lower section first and then when we place the upper section we have to place it on the side where the indentation is because once force is applied this will be the sliding area where the upper section can move okay
Now the purpose of these other two screws, these are the separator screws. When the experiment starts, uh, before the experiment starts, we tighten these a bit so that we can separate the surface of the upper shear box bottom from the lower shear box top so that they are not in contact with each other and they do not uh, provide any friction of their own so that we can only check the strength of the soil itself. Okay, so first we place the lower shear box. It has to be connected completely with this. base plate. In the base plate we will place the porous plate and then the shear plate. We will then place the upper section on top and then tighten the screws to ensure that while we are shifting this uh, to our direct shear machine, the assembly does, is not disturbed and to ensure that the volume is indeed 60 by 60 throughout. Now we will begin to place our soil inside the shear box. Currently we have 116 grams of sand in front of us. However, the weight is not fixed. It, it's decided based on your relative density test uh, where you find the maximum and minimum densities and then based on those results, you can be specified whether to perform the direct shear test on 50% uh, relative density of the sand, 60% or whatever the specifications require. And based on those, you will calculate how much mass you need. Now, using this, we will start filling the shear box. that it is evenly spread throughout and that the top is flat. Then we will place the upper shear plate then the porous disc and the loading cap. Once this entire assembly is complete, we will lift this and place it on these treads over here because uh, these tracks over here because as you can see on the underside of a shear box, it has these two treads on which it can run over the tracks.